Chris Guns here with the great Chicago boxing trainer Sam Colonna, a true boxing guy through and through. You'll find him in the corners of pro boxers as well as amateurs, and he trains them out of his beautiful gym, the Sam Colonna Boxing Club. How's it going, Sam? Thanks for joining me. Oh, I'm doing fine, thank you. What can, I, what can I do for you? Well, there's a question going through the boxing world right now, Sam. I, I know a lot of people in the boxing game who know their ins and outs of the game, knows pretty much everybody in the game, but... One guy who's getting a title shot on Saturday and slipped under the radar, Cedric Agnew. A lot of people don't know about him. You founded him. Oh. What? 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 Well, I I definitely know about him because I used to train him, and uh, he was a hell of an amateur. And uh, he's a well kept secret that uh, don't be don't be surprised if he gives you an upset uh, this weekend. Yeah, and you did train him. I. I... He got to fight. He got to fight. Pound for pound, he's probably got the best skills in boxing next to, next to Mayweather. That's where he fits in. Yeah, and you saw him in the gym. You're the first guy that, that that's why I said you founded him. What what did he do that that impressed you enough to label him the best prospect out of Chicago in 30 years? That's high praise. Chicago's a big fight city. What what was it that you see in him that, that gives him that label? Well, you know, I, he, this kid's got uh, beautiful skills. His time is right on the money. He's got fast hands for a light heavyweight, and he can punch. Yeah, and in Chicago hasn't he? It hasn't produced as many champions or contenders as it did in the past. But Montel Griffin came around in the 1990s. Does, does he impress you more than Montel did? Oh, um, I think uh, you know this is a different, different kind of a of a, of a boxer. Um, but uh, he's got the skills of Montel Griffin. He's part with Montel Griffin. No. And uh, many times when he was just a kid, and he did very well in Montel. So, I mean, he, he comes from a good, uh, good breed of boxers because at that era when he was uh, coming up in Chicago, he was sparring with all the all the top guys, you know. And uh, he was just a kid. Yeah. So he's 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 been in there with some good fighters. Yeah, and it, you did train him if you were in charge of his career right now, and. and I, I, you're a great trainer. You know the business better than anybody, or as good as anybody. If you had full control of his career, would you put him in with Sergey Kovalev right now? Well, at the stage where he's in, it's do or die for him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because people say, "Well, he hasn't fought the top guys. You know, he's not ready." But you know what? It comes a time in somebody's life, like 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 Cedric Agnew. But when is the right time? Mm -hmm. oh, is, is there ever a right time? You know, I feel that, yeah, I think it's the right time. And uh, his management, they sort of now, they feel the same thing. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't turn down a title shot when it comes along either. If you uh, I mean, and then with his record, you got you to gotta go for it, you know? It's a win-win situation for him, you know? It is. Yeah. Unless he gets blown out the first round, which mm -hmm. I don't see it happening. I really don't. Yeah, let's we don't see that happening. Let's talk about Sergey. I, I, I covered the Sergey Kovalev fight when he fought Gabriel Campillo here in Connecticut. And uh -huh. when I was there, he landed that shot that ended the fight. And, and I was looking down at the moment it landed. But when it did land, I heard it through the arena. Uh, the whole crowd was like, <gasps> they gasped. His, his punches sound different. As a trainer who, who keeps his eye on the sport, one of the best trainers in the game, guy uh, who, who knows and seen many great fighters. What, when, when you watch Sergey, what, what do you think of him as a fighter? Well, I don't, I don't really watch. I mean, I've worked with him, with Sergey. I worked as, I worked, I was in the locker room with them. I was uh, in the fight when he was where he was. I saw him live right there. And uh, he's a human being. Yes, he can punch a little bit. And he's got a hell of a punch. But you got to land that punch. And you got you got to stay away from punches. Has he really ever been really tested? I don't know. You tell me. I mean, who was out there to really really test him? You know what I mean? Everybody's been fighting, he's been going out the first the first four or five rounds. Yeah. So I mean, he fought a Campillo, and uh, he did well with him. But you know, they were saying Campillo wasn't training for that fight. He had uh, issues with uh, getting into the getting into the United States. And he wasn't training for a whole week. I mean, that's excuses, yes. He did hit him. I can't, you can't take that away from him. You know? 
Yeah. The computer is not, he's not, a, he's not a real big puncher, in my opinion. You know, he's okay. He's a, he was a great champion, but he's not one punch artist. Like, uh, you know, he's going to hit you and knock you out, you know? Yeah. Do you, a lot of people think that Sergey's the best light heavyweight in the world right now. A lot of people still say Adonis Stevenson is, but most people are starting to switch it up, especially now after Adonis signed with Al Heyman and now he moved to Showtime. It seems like he's doing everything he can to avoid Sergey. So a lot of people are saying that Sergey's the best in the world right now. Do you think he's just benefiting from a lot of matchmaking? Uh, or do you think he's as good uh, I'm sorry. Uh, and May 24th. My, my fighter, Andrew Fofara, fights him. And I will see who the best light heavyweight is, you know? Because yeah. they're saying that Donna Stevens is a great puncher. Well, I think I think Fofara is a great puncher, too. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he's been, he's been knocking guys out just like he has. Of course, he's been doing it a little faster. But we've been fighting, uh, you know, guys that are capable and able. So we're... We're out there to prove something too when we we train him. And then after this week we'll see if Sergey does his job. And then uh and then of course, you know, we'll see if Fun Tom does his job. Because mm-hmm. I feel that we can beat him. We got the tools to beat him and we got the punching power to beat him. So whoever lands first in that fight might go. Because un- people are underestimating Fun Tom. Yeah. How come? How come Cedric left Chicago? Great, great city. He had a great trainer in, in fighting you. How come he did relocate to to Texas? Well, I think it, I think it was best for him to relocate. You know, he was it was very hard for him to come to my gym. Uh, we went on good terms. There was nothing, no, you know, there was not a problem at all. Him going over there, I was kind of glad. He was kind of getting into problems. He's not a troublemaker, but the people around him. Mm. And, might have been problems, you know, where he was at, where he was staying, you know, the transportation, going back and forth, and just everything changed for him, and I'm, I'm happy for him that his career went the way it did. I mean, if he was with me, he'd probably be in the, in the same position, but the uh, environment might have got to him, you know what I mean? And he wouldn't be where he's at now. So I'm glad that, that he made that, that, that switch going over to Texas. And he was really, really focused on boxing, where he was. You know, one day he was in the gym, three days his car was broke, two days he couldn't make it. It was a problem, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm glad, I'm glad he made that, that, that decision. Yeah, and some guys just got to get away from... from yeah. The, the and not, that, not that it was bad training. He had great sparring, sparring from Paul, Donovan George, Montel. I mean, he, he was sparring with top guys all the time. Just that, uh, you know, he made my switch because, because like I told you, the environment would have got to him. Yeah, and in March 29th in Atlantic City, the guy that, that you founded and, and trained and, and helped direct is getting a shot. How's it going to play out, uh, Sam? Well, I feel that uh, this, this is the way I play this. Uh, if Cirque doesn't hit him out in the, in the first three, four rounds, so he's in a long, long night. Mm-hmm. He's gonna have he's gonna have a problem getting to him. That's that's how I feel. Yeah. And don't be surprised if it's, uh, if uh, if Cedric gets a, a decision. Yeah. And Sam Colonna, I already mentioned the beautiful Sam Colonna Boxing Club in Chicago. You teach boxing as well as MMA. Tell us about the gym. Well, uh, I've been open, you know, under Sam Colonna for about a year and a, a year and a couple months. I've been at the Windy City Gym for a long time. And uh, with the Chicago Box and I opened up my own gym. We have a lot of professional fighters there. And uh, we, we even cater to kids. You know, we got it all. Masters, kids, and uh, of course the professionals. And uh, we, do, we do it all. Conditioning, lose weight, and we get guys ready for world titles. And it's one of the great fight cities. What, what's the state of boxing right now? We we know you as, as work in the corner of probably most notably uh, amongst boxing people, Angel Man Freddy, and and you yeah. work the corner of Vaughn Andrew, Bean and Andrew, Andrew, Andrew Galata. You know, I was in the corner with David Diaz. I was in the corner with uh, Farfara uh, Adamek Adamek. You know, from from Poland, yeah. he became a world champion under my wing. You know, when he fought Paul Briggs, I've uh, I've trained many 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 fighters. Yeah. You know, throughout the years. 
What's the state of, of the, the city of Chicago right now as far as boxing is concerned? Well, you know, I tell you, Chicago's making some noise. You know, they got Bobby Hitch running either in Chicago or in uh, Hammond, Indiana, which is like, you know, right the border of Chicago. And then we got, uh, you know, Dominic the Soul, the eight count, and uh, they teamed up with the Warriors. They've been doing a lot of TV shows there, you know. And I uh, hope that uh, HBO or Showtime comes to Chicago, you know, because I think, I think we're ready for it. Yeah, definitely. And do you have more people getting in, into the gym for boxing lessons or MMA lessons? I'll tell you, right now my gym is really catered to boxing. We do have MMA, mm-hmm. you know, but uh, we I have a lot of MMA fighters that come to my gym for the boxing aspect of it, not the, not the MMA. But we do teach MMA. We have a kid that uh, that teaches it. He's an MMA fighter, professional boxer. So they come to me and say, Sam, I want to be, you know, I want more stand-up. And that's when I come in and start working with him and, uh, you know, work his hands and his, uh, his movement and, and get him where he wants to be. And if you're in Chicago or any place around Chicago and, and you want to learn boxing from one of the great minds in the game, pay Sam Colonna a visit at the Sam Colonna Boxing Club. Are you on the social network, Sam? Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, are you on all that? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm on uh, I'm on Twitter and uh, I don't know about Instagram. I don't know if I'm that advanced <laughs> yet, but my, the, the people I'm with, they're, they're all on that. I'm really not too much on it, you know, mm-hmm. but uh, my wife and Rita and uh, the people that do my uh, my computer stuff, the bishops, and uh, they're they're pretty much on it. 